Are the Garabondal apparitions authentic? Stick around to find out. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Reason and Theology. Your host, Michael Lofton. I wanted to talk about... Briefly, the Garibaldo apparitions. There are people promoting this um, again recently. Uh, this actually happened back in the 60s, but it's continuing to spread and be promoted. And a lot of people are confused. And I just wanted to weigh in and offer some thoughts here because I do have some concerns about these apparitions. Um, for those of y'all who may not be familiar, these are um, alleged apparitions of St. Michael the Archangel and the Blessed Virgin Mary to four children in Spain between the years of 61 and 65. And it's, you know, claim again that the Virgin Mary was appearing here giving messages in addition to St. Michael the Archangel, who allegedly performed some Eucharistic miracles, a video of which we're going to watch here in a moment. Um, but one of the big concerns is what the um, prefect for the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith has said about it as well as the local bishop. And unfortunately, what we're hearing and what I'm seeing of it being disseminated to people is kind of half of the story. So I want to weigh in and offer some additional information for people to consider that they probably aren't being told whenever people are promoting this. Now, for those who may want to just have a brief um uh, explanation or example of what the message is, I am going to um, pull up on my screen a quote of one of these messages. Uh, let me try to zoom in on it so it could be a little bit larger for you. And let me share my screen so that you could see it. Um, here's one alleged message from June the 18th of 1965. The message which the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, Blessed Virgin has given to the world through her intercession of St. Michael. The angel said, as my message of the 18th of October has not been comp complied with, and as it has not been made known to the world, I'm telling you that this is the last one. Previously, the cup was filling. Now it is brimming over. Many priests are following the road to perdition, and with them, they are taking many more souls. I mean, <laughs> nothing new there. Uh, that's been the case for, I don't know, since the beginning of time. Uh, God's covenant people and priests in the covenant people have certainly struggled, so nothing new here. Ever less importance is being given to the Holy Eucharist. Definitely nothing new there either. We should turn the wrath of God away from us by our own efforts. If you ask his forgiveness with a sincere heart, he'll pardon you. I, your mother, through the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel, wish to tell you that you should make amends. You are now being given the last warnings. I love you very much, and I do not want your condemnation. Ask us sincerely, and we shall grant your plea. You must make more sacrifices, reflect on the passion of Jesus. Again, certainly nothing new here. Now, there are many other things that have been said, but I just wanted to give you just one sample. And in and of itself, I don't see anything wrong with that message per se. Um, now, maybe somebody can bring to my attention something that might be problematic with it, but in and of itself, I don't see any issue with that particular message. My concern comes from some other areas, specifically um, what the bishop and also Rome has said about this matter. I'm going to share my screen where I want us to take a brief look at what the bishop, actually some of his predecessor bishops too, and also Rome has said on the matter. Uh, let's read through this together. First, let's start with what the prefect for the congregation of the doctrine of the faith has said. And why is that important? Well, because if God is really giving us a message through the Virgin Mary or St. Mark the Archangel. It's going to be something that he does not in opposition to the church. He's going to secure the confidence of the church in the message. Um, there's not going to be a case where you have God speaking and then his church is rejecting it. Here I'm speaking of the hierarchy. Uh, the hierarchy is going to be something that he works with, and he's going to convict the hearts of those who are leaders in the church to the message. 
And that has not happened. In fact, it's kind of the opposite direction. Um, here is a letter from Cardinal Sepper, prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. Now it's the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith to Archbishop Philip of New Orleans, 1970. April 21st, the office has received your letter, um, April 1970, in which you express justifiable apprehension about the diffusion of the Garibondo movement in your archdiocese, and in which you ask for clear and reliable guidelines from the Holy See for dealing with this phenomenon. So the bishop is asking Rome, hey, what do I do? People are spreading this in my territory. Well, here's what Rome says. The Holy See shares your perception about the manifest and increasing confusion due to the diffusion of this movement among the faithful and desires with this letter to clarify its position on the matter. The sacred congregation, despite requests from various bishops and faithful, has always refused to define the supernatural character of the events of Garibandal. Um, after the definitive negative judgment issued by the Curia of Santander, this sacred congregation, after attentive uh, examination of the proceedings forwarded to this office has often praised the prudence that characterized the movement followed in the examination, but has still decided to leave direct responsibility for the matter to the local ordinary. Um, so it's basically saying, look, the local ordinary, we're going with what his decision is, the local bishop. But it doesn't stop there. It, they don't just say, hey, we're going to defer to the local bishop. Look what it says next. And here's the part that you're probably not going to hear from people who present Garibondo. And that's one of my concerns. The Holy See has always held that the conclusions and dispositions of the Bishop of Santander were sufficiently secure guidelines for the Christian people and indications for the bishops to order to dissuade people from participating in pilgrimages and other acts of devotion that are based on claims connected with or founded on the presumed apparitions and messages of Garibondo. On March 10th, 1996, the congregation wrote a letter to this effect to the Bishop of Santander, who had also asked for a more explicit declaration of the Holy See to the matter. However, promoters of the Garibondo movement have tried to minimize the decisions and the jurisdiction of the Bishop of Santander. Not a good sign. This sacred congregation wants it to be clearly understood that the Bishop of Santander has been and continues to be the only one with competent or complete jurisdiction in this matter. And the Holy See has no intention of examining this question any further, since it holds that the examinations already carried out are sufficiently, as well as are the official declarations of the Bishop of Santander. There is no truth to the statement that the Holy See has named an official papal private investigator of Garibondel and affirmations attributed to the anonymous personage to the extent that the verification of the Garibondo apparitions lies completely in the hands of the Holy Father, Pope Paul VI, and any uh, and every other expressions that aim at undermining the authority of the decisions of the Bishop of Santander are completely unfounded. In order to reply to certain doubts that you expressed in your letter to the congregation, wishes to assert that the Holy See has never approved even directly, in, I'm sorry, even indirectly to the Garibondo movement, that it never, it has never encouraged or blessed Garibondo promoters or sinners. Did you hear that? Rather, the Holy See deplores the fact that certain persons and institutions persist in formatting the movement in obvious contradiction with the dispositions of ecclesiastical authority and thus disseminate confusion among the people, especially among the simple and defenseless. Did you hear that? The prefect for the congregation is saying the Holy See. It's not just that the Holy See is saying, look, you know, we neither approve nor deny this thing and we just defer to the bishop. It's actually saying, look, it deplores the people who are going against the judgment of the local bishop. It is not a good sign for a movement. When you're going against the ecclesiastical authority, that is a sign of concern of a movement that is not from God. That's my concern here. It goes on uh, to mention the decision of Santander down here, uh, 1996. Some people have been, and this is the bishop in 1996, some people have been coming directly to the Diocese of Santander asking about the alleged apparitions of Garibandal, and above all for the position of the hierarchy of the church concerning these apparitions. I must communicate that one, all the bishops of the diocese from 61 through 70 
asserted that the supernatural character of the said apparitions that took place around that time could not be confirmed. So they can't confirm whether or not this is supernatural. But keep in mind, the congregation has just has not just said, hey, we can't just confirm whether this is true. They're saying they deplore the fact that people are still promoting this against the local bishop. In the month of December, uh, the Bishop of Santander in Union, and this is, uh, I'm sorry, of 1977, in Union with his predecessors, affirmed that in the six years of being Bishop of Santander, there were no new phenomenon, notwithstanding the same Monsignor, the first years having passed in which there was confusion to uh, enthusiasm initiated at an interdisciplinary study in order to examine the greater profundity uh, of these phenomenon. The conclusion of this study Co, uh, coincided <clears throat> with the previous findings by the bishops, which is to say that it does not prove the supernaturality of said apparitions. The study concurred, I'm sorry, concluded during the days in which I took possession of the diocese in 1991. Taking advantage in that same year of a trip to Rome for the motive of making the Ad Lima visit, I presented said study to the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith and asked for guidance for pastoral activity concerning the case. On November 1992, the congregation sent to me its response consisting in that after having examined attentively the mentioned documentation, it did not consider it opportune to intervene directly, removing the ordinary jurisdiction of the Bishop of Santander, the subject that belongs to him by right. Previous declarations of the Holy See agree in this finding. And the same letter was suggested if I find it opportune to publish a declaration in which it is reaffirmed that the supernaturality of the reference acquisitions was not pr prove, uh, proven, making my own the unanimous position of my predecessors. Unanimous position of his predecessors and the congregation backing it up saying, hey, we can't confirm anything supernatural here and we despise people who are promoting this over and against the direction of the local bishop. Given that the declarations of my predecessors who studied the case have been clear and unanimous, I do not find it necessary to have a new public declaration that would give notoriety to something which happened so long ago. However, I find it opportune to redact this information as direct response to the persons who ask for direction concerning this question, which I finally accepting the decision of my predecessors in the direction of the Holy See in reference to the celebration of the Eucharist in Garibondel. I only allow that it be celebrated in the parish church without reference to the alleged apparitions and with the permission of the current pastor who has my confidence okay so again to recap that it is not the case that simply it has neither been confirmed nor denied it's also the case that the holy see is saying it despises and deplores the fact that people are still promoting this that's what is being left out and that's a problem and again it's also a problem with promoting a movement that the church has not endorsed and has looked into and again has not endorsed it's a problem to continue to promote that because what that basically means is the virgin mary came and tried to communicate a message to us but wasn't able to win over the confidence of the church's hierarchy that doesn't make sense because the holy spirit is guiding the church including the hierarchy as a whole so it doesn't make sense that both the all of these local ordinaries, and even Rome itself on the universal level, it doesn't make sense that they would completely be out of step and out of sync with the Holy Spirit if this is something that the Holy Spirit was trying to communicate to people. He would secure the confidence of his shepherds. This is what makes us as Catholics different from non-Catholics who claim to have prophecies and visions. This is what makes us different. We have a church. We have a hierarchy. And if the church and hierarchy does not approve of these things, we don't follow or promote them. That's why we're not Protestants. That's the difference between us and Protestants. We have a hierarchy. We have a church. We have a magisterium. And we follow it on such things. Now, I want to briefly uh, look at the video showing an alleged uh, Eucharistic miracle. Uh, let me share my screen, and you should be able to see it in just a second. Let me enable audio. Um, okay, this is, again, allegedly St. Michael the Archangel um, giving the Eucharist to um, one of the visionaries. Now, 
I want to say here that, and by the way, this happened at like 1.40 in the morning, if I recall correctly. That's why it looks like it's, you know, nighttime and it's really dark there. Um, what's taking place is he's giving her Holy Communion, and he also said that he would make this visible as a miracle to prove the message. So here's footage, allegedly, of one of the visionaries allegedly receiving the Eucharist. Let's watch it together. 1.40 a.m., July 19th, 1962, allegedly. Now you can see it looks like there's something white here, right? It, it kind of looks like uh, the Eucharist in the Roman Rite. Now, you'll notice a, f a light here, a flashlight. It looks like some kind of light source. Now, did you notice the light moved a little bit over here to the left, and you no longer are seeing that white spot on the tongue? Let me rewind it. You're seeing a white spot here. Now, all of a sudden, the light source is moving, and this is going to become dim, and it's going to look like it's not white anymore. Now, initially, I thought, well, okay, well, you know, maybe, you know, the, the appearance of the host is no longer visible. That was just the end of the miracle. But watch this. Again, it looks like nothing is there, but keep watching. Now it looks like it's back. Looks like it's back. And the light has moved a little bit over here. It looks like it all of a sudden has just reappeared. So is the claim that Michael the Archangel gave her the Eucharist, it's visibly seen to the eyes, it disappears, and then it comes right back. Okay, that doesn't seem very convincing. What does seem more likely, in my opinion, just watching the video, is that there is a light source here, and it's moving around. And depending on its movement, it could be either reflecting on the tongue or making it more dim. For all I know, this white looking appearance on the tongue is just a reflection of light and then when the light moves the source moves it becomes dim and then when it moves again closer in that direction maybe it, it becomes again white it, it becomes bright perhaps again due to reflection i don't know but all i'm saying is maybe the eucharistic miracle video is true but i just don't see a good reason to believe it when it seems like there's a natural explanation for this Perhaps somebody else can, um, you know, watch the video. Perhaps a um, professional can examine it and determine, okay, well, no, it couldn't possibly be a light source. Here's an analysis on it. I'd be curious to hear that. I mean, I'm, I'm open still to the idea that this is a Eucharistic miracle, but it just doesn't seem very likely from what I'm seeing here. Again, notice how it looks dim again, once again. So are we to believe that the Eucharist is appearing, disappearing, appearing, disappearing? And that's it. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I can't confidently say that that video somehow convinces me over and against the local bishop, over and against the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. It's just not good enough. Well, another thing that people try to pull out is my confirmation saint, Padre Pio. And what you'll notice them do over and over and over is they'll say, well, so-and-so said that they met with Padre Pio, and this is a credible person because they knew Padre Pio for this amount of time, blah, blah, blah. And they said that they once spoke to Padre Pio, and Padre Pio said this about Garibanda, and, and he gave a rosary to this person, and, you know, and they said that this and that happened, and Again, it's all secondhand. Maybe it's true. Maybe that secondhand information is true. 
if it is, it doesn't mean that Padre Pio is right because Padre Pio himself would recognize that his evaluation does not take precedence over the local bishop in the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith. He was a man in step with the church, and he would have said, forget his opinion. If the local bishop and the um, uh, you know, congregation says otherwise, go with them. So it's very hard for me to rely on secondary sources, given that we know that Padre Pio was always in step with the uh, magisterium and would never have gone against it and would have put his trust and confidence in the magisterium in these issues. So these secondhand testimonies aren't very persuasive over and against the church, over and against the church. That's the key. Another thing that you'll see some people point out, um, they'll claim that Padre Pio wrote to one of the visionaries, um, but they don't always give you all of the information. And that's what I would like to try to do here is give you a little bit more information about this. Let me share my screen. This is allegedly a letter written uh, from San Giovanni Rotondo, I believe, uh, to the visionary. So this is allegedly coming from the monastery of, of Padre Pio. Um, and so they got the stamp and postage and everything on it. There's that. And here's the actual letter. Um, and you can see it is not in English. I'll read a translation to you. But what I want to point out here, you'll notice it's not signed. It is not signed. It doesn't say who it's from. And there is no signature. Again, neither is it identified as just who said this nor is there a signature. I haven't seen any evidence to the contrary. This is one of my concerns. Let me again share my screen. I don't think you saw that part. Should be able to see it now. Uh, here's the letter. So this is the letter allegedly from Padre Pio written to one of the visionaries. And it does not identify who sent this from the monastery of Fra Pio. And the letter itself, again, is not signed by anybody, let alone Padre Pio. So it's assumed that Padre Pio sent this letter if it's authentic. It's assumed that Padre Pio sent the letter. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. But it's assumed. And that needs to be presented to people. People need to be aware of that, that it is speculation that he wrote this letter. Um, <clears throat> I am going to read a translation to you. Let's see here. Share my screen once more. Dear children, this morning at 9 o'clock, the Blessed Virgin Mary spoke to me about you, dear children, and your vision. She told me to tell you, O blessed girls of San Sebastián de Garabandal, I promise to be with you until the end of time. And you will be with me until the end of the world, and then in the joy of heaven. I, I just want to say that's kind of unusual language. I'll be with you until the end of the time, and you will be with me until the end of the world? Oh. I, okay. And then in the joy of heaven. Attached to this letter is a copy of the Holy Rosie or Fatima, which the Blessed Virgin Mary ordered me to send to you. The Blessed Virgin has dictated this rosary, and she desires it to be made, made known for the salvation of sinners and to preserve humanity from the worst punishments that the good God is threatening it with. My recommendation is this. Pray and encourage others to pray because the world is on its way to perdition. They do not believe you or our conversations with a white lady, but they will believe when it's too late. I mean, the message about the rosary, pray, repent, all that's great. This other stuff that the Virgin Mary appeared to me and confirmed this message, and um, they'll believe it, but only when it's too late. Again, we don't even know that this came from Padre Pio. 
but Padre Pio would have been the very first person to tell you, listen to the church, listen to the local bishop, listen to the CDF. He would have been the first person to tell you that. And what does the CDF say? It says it deplores people who are still spreading this. Those are the facts. And that's why I just have some concerns. I'm not saying it's false. Not saying it's demonic. Not saying Padre Pio didn't write the letter. Maybe those things are true. Not saying the Eucharistic miracle is just not true. I don't have definitive proof against any of those things. So I'm not making that claim. But what I'm saying is I can't confidently say that they're true. And I also know that we shouldn't be spreading this stuff in light of what the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith has said. Otherwise, we're removing ourselves from the Catholic realm and we are now behaving as Protestants do whenever certain charismatic Protestants want to present a message. They don't have a magisterium, so they just present it, and it's people's just mere opinion on whether or not they're going to accept it. What differentiates us from them is we have a magisterium that can authenticate the message because we do know that the magisterium is being led by God. We do know that. It's not infallible. It's not impeccable. But when you have unanimous bishops and the CDF, I think you can be confident that this is not something we should be promoting. And again, that's what distinguishes us from Protestants. So those are things that I, I want us to uh, briefly consider as we continue to hear people promoting this message. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. If so, hit that like button and the subscribe button. And of course, check me out, patreon.com forward slash reason and theology if you want to support me and get access to extra content. That's going to do it, y'all. I'll see you later. God bless. Are you confused about how Catholic teaching authority works? With encyclicals, papal bulls, councils, and many other things, it's easy to get confused on what is authoritative and what is not. Fortunately, at MaximusInstitute.com, I have prepared a course explaining the magisterium from A to Z. Visit the website and check out the course, Understanding the Magisterium, for more information. Is it possible that ancient aliens created other ancient aliens? Ancient alien theorists say yes. But then, is it also possible that ancient aliens created the ancient alien theorists? And are the ancient aliens and ancient alien theorists led by the Vatican headed by the Pope? Ancient alien theorists and certain unnamed Catholic YouTubers say yes. Tired of Catholic shows that peddle conspiracy theories that sound like something out of an Ancient Aliens episode? Check out Reason and Theology for a more reasonable take. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, office, or any kind of property anywhere in the world, you're going to want to call Real Estate for Life, and they're going to connect you with a Catholic agent. Now, that agent will donate a portion of their commission upon sale, and Real Estate for Life will donate 75% of that gift to a pro-life organization at no cost to you. Call Real Estate for Life at 1-877-LIFE-US1 or text them 248 431 1440. If you care about the pro life cause, call them now.